Welcome back to Los Angeles Academy of Art. Now that we've done our block in, I'm going to go ahead and lay in our major colors. This will also mean that I'm laying in our major values. Um, there are several ways to paint and everyone has a different opinion on which way is the best. Uh, for me, I love to lay in my major colors and mid-tones before I start working with those colors on the canvas. Other people will say lay it in exactly as you want it on the canvas. That's not for me. It's not for everybody. Uh, and I do do that way sometimes if I feel that that's, you know, my thing. Sometimes, especially with portraits, I will lay it in as exactly as I want to see it. Uh, but most of the time I will put it on and then I will work with it on the canvas because I love to see everything. It's easier for me to form that in my head once it's already laid on there. Um, so what I'm going to focus on is laying in our lights our shadows, these are just for the bell pepper, the stem, as well as a little bit of the background and some of this shadow which is already in there. Uh, one thing that I want to point out is this is still wet, I haven't let it dry or anything, I just took a short break. Um, and then also that when I'm laying in the information, I'm just doing the large chunks of what are the main areas. I'm not going to put any kind of fancy stuff. And I'm also going to think about composition. So for this painting, um, we have this big mid-tone. That means that the value, which is the light or dark, is in the middle range. So we want the value in here to be a mid-tone. This is the red on the bell pepper that you see here. We're going to have our darks over here. And of course in the shadows, the shadows will be darker, but the rest of the background is still going to be dark. Because as I said, from my angle, I can't even see that blue. I can only see the background is the black. Um, and then a little bit of lights, and the lights are gonna come here on the stem, as well as in the highlights. But one thing I kinda wanna do is add a little bit more light just for fun. So I probably will leave some of this canvas exposed, or I will fill it in with a lighter color, just to make it more exciting. Like maybe cut off right here, this is all dark, this is all dark, here's mid-tone, and then some light here. Um, I haven't decided. And this is why it's so fun to paint, is because once you understand the basics and once you go through those motions, which I know are tedious, once you learn how to draw, once you learn how to put paint on the canvas, you get to do whatever you want. If you want it abstract, make it abstract, but you'll understand how to do it the way that you want it. So you don't have to do it the way I do it, but this is just another method and it will help you learn how to do the method you prefer. So, this is bell pepper, it is red, uh, but our lighting is very, very cool. So cool lighting uh, is like blues, it's anything from a north light window or even a south light window, uh, as long as it's not around sunset you get more warm light around sunset in the south light. But north light windows, all the time they're cool if you're in the shade. Uh, even if you have a light source, it's still going to be cool because it's all relative to your area. So I've used a cool light for this because I think it's fun. And that means that my painting, my bell pepper itself, is not going to be bright, bright red. I think if we use a warm, if we use a warm light, we might be able to just take this and maybe some of this. This is cadmium red and this is cadmium orange. And we could probably just stick that right on the canvas. But since I have that cool light, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of make it a little more gray. So we wanna see something that's gray. And then I can really work with those colors in the actual, uh, once I'm actually painting. So I do have some Gamsol on my brush. I usually just take the tip of my brush just right here, just put just to here. Cause since the brush is uh, very, very like, uh, it, will, it will soak in your Gamsol. It will take it and it will soak it in. And so you don't want to dip it all the way down because you will end up with way, way, way too much on your brush. Even this is a little bit more liquidy than I like. However, normally um, my palette is straight. So if it's flat, it's not going to drip down like you see it now. Uh, this is an Edge Pro Gear palette and so I have it on a tripod and I have it facing this way so that you can see it. So, uh, I'm gonna start with red. 
and we're gonna have to add some of what is the opposite of red, which is green. Um, I have three different greens on my palette. This is sap green. This is for any kind of green you see in nature. A lot of them have this as a base. Even your cooler greens, you can add a viridian, but this viridian is mostly for portraits or uh, lighter objects. It's not for actual plants. Plants tend to fall on the yellow side, uh, which is this sap green. Then I have viridian, which as I mentioned, I only mostly only use to cool down portraits. Um, I like it for different objects or blankets or whatever is green that's not quite so yellow as the sap green. And then I have this green that I don't normally use, but I'm going to use it here. This is Windsor and Newton olive green. It's very specific color. Uh, n nobody else makes olive green like this. So this is the only greens that I have. I will use a little more green as well. Viridian is great because if you have like a red, and again, this is red, but it's under a cool light, the viridian doesn't add all that yellow that makes it look orangey. It will just cool it down quite a bit, as you can see. Um, it's not only cooler, but a little darker. Um, and so what it, so I will use that sometimes for the cool reds under cool light. And so I'm gonna add a little bit of this orange. I don't have much on here, so I'll probably refill it by our next video. Look at that nice color. That is a mid-tone. It is a little dark, though, because this, what I'm seeing here is, is quite a bright color. So I'm going to add a little bit of, um, there's two whites here, and they're both combined, so I'm not actually sure which white this is. I have Cremnance White by Michael Harding, and I have Titanium White um, by Michael Harding as well. I'm going to brighten this up just a bit. Yeah, this is a little too bright. And painting is fun because you can just go back and fix it. Have a problem? Fix it. It got a little bit too cool when I added the white. White always makes everything a little cooler. So I'm going to add a little more of that cad red. And a little bit more of that cadmium orange. And the good thing about that is it's made my paint slightly thicker. Um, and it doesn't look that bright, but it will once we add our um, information here. So I'm going to pull it in. I know I said in my last video that I use these lines to kind of indicate where everything's going to be, but I'm really careful about making sure that I go through the line when I'm actually painting. I'm going to add a little more red. Yeah, a little bit more. So, I'm pretty much just putting big chunks of color, but I may, let's say, because I want to, because uh, I know what's going to happen, uh, I want to maybe, let's say, put in a little of this shadow. This is the shadow that I originally made for this dark, dark, dark part, and technically, since that area is going to be reflecting onto everything, this whole area will have some of that shadow in it. Not too, too much, but it will have some of it. And again, I try to paint through those lines, even if they're there and I see them on the canvas, I will paint through them at first. So again, my brush still has some of that shadow on it, so I'm going to use it in these darker areas. Just under here, here in the dark. There's even a little bit more in the back here. This is, it turns a little bit here, the form turns. And I'm going to add a little more warmth to that shadow by pulling burnt sienna. Here. I'm going to get into this. And also in the back here. So remember in the blocking, I said I don't want people focusing on this back part. Even though it's almost as bright as this side, I don't want people to go looking back there. So what I'll do is kind of add some shadow or add some background. It depends on how you're painting, but that's what um, I would do in this case. So that that way, see, even when I put it on here, it is so much less emphasis on here than it is on the other areas. Now I'm going to wipe my brush and go back into those brighter colors. A little bit of 
a little bit more orange here, a little bit red. There's this really cool, this bright area right here. I love that. I love bell peppers for painting. Do not like the way they taste, but I certainly love the way they look. And some orange in here. But I'm gonna restrain this again a little bit because I wanna wait until I'm closer to, you know, finish blocking in before I add all those amazing colors. And then what I see is over here, again, a little bit of shadow. So I'm gonna add some of our shadow. I'm gonna use some of the burnt sienna as well. The burnt sienna, remember, is to warm it up. It's a very warm shadow because we're in a cool light. We'll put all those little details in later. So let's put it in here. Keep this light. A bit bright. Just a tiny bit like right here. And I want this to come out a little bit more because I like it. Okay, so that's our blocking for our main shape of our bell pepper. Now I'm gonna do the background area. So I had some background here. This is a shadow that I put here. So you guys saw me put that there. I'm going to use that same one and I'm just going to add a tiny bit of white. So a lot of times when you add white, you need to add another color. So if you have a cool light, you want to add blue. If you have a warm light, you want to add more orange, yellow, or red. Uh, in this case, I will add a tiny, tiny, tiny bit of blue. And as you can see, I just poked my brush in there and even wiped it off a little bit. Go in here. See how much cooler and lighter that looks already? But I want it to be a hint cooler, just for some real strong emphasis on how cool, cool temperature-wise. Although it's also nice. And uh, I'm real restrained with my ultramarine. I use I use Williamsburg ultramarine blue, uh, and it is pretty strong. So I try to just just the tip of my brush in there. And again, anytime I'm adding white, I'm gonna add a little blue. But I don't want to mix up too much if I can help it. Okay. It's going to look really bright once I put it down next to the shadow. Look how bright that is. And I'm trying to paint through those areas where I had the outline pretty much. And remember, I wanted to keep this area open in case I want to do some light composition. I may need to mix a little more just a little bit dry. And always, always, always paint into your object. You're not just painting around. See how I'm painting over these lines? I'm, I'm painting into it. If you don't paint into it, you're going to have a block of red, a block of black, and you might even have some open areas where you were like, what is going on? Why does this look so weird? Uh, and it's pretty much usually uh, because you have such a, it, it'll look more cartoonish. It'll look more like that. And now I'm going to start adding back in that darker color. I'm just pulling this old sienna mix that I have from before. Again, I like to use this uh, old mixes. And I'm just putting a little bit of a vignette around the edges so that the edges are darker. I don't want them to be the focal point. I want this to be the focal point. So this has to be the most eye-catching spot on my paint, my painting. So I'm just adding that back in as if, you know, and I'm just dry brushing. You can mix on the canvas as well. So sometimes I'll pick up this dark mix and I'll just put it on the canvas and drag it out. 
or you can mix it on the palette. It's really up to you. Again, I'm going to keep some of this open. Got to get a little more of that background mix because I just don't have quite enough. And uh, this is a block-in and the background block-in and the major shapes block-in. However, it is just a block-in and for this case, I will most likely come back uh, to do the rest. So I'm not too worried about keeping big piles of paint, but if you're painting it all in one sitting, you want to make sure that you have enough background that later, if you do this out of the background, you can come back and just take your brush, pick it up, and pick up a piece of that paint. If it's too thin, too dry, or you haven't mixed enough, you're not going to be able to come back and paint with it. So, there are a couple of compositional things that I'm going to think about here. Uh, you don't have to think about it. It doesn't matter. It's still going to look good. You're going to paint a beautiful, beautiful bell pepper and or other object that's similar to the size and shape of a bell pepper. Um, but what I want to do is I think that I want to brighten up this area right back here. I'm going to add a little bit of that white. And remember, always add your light color, either your cool light, ultramarine blue, or your warm light cad red, yellow, or orange, depending on the light, when you add white. Never just add straight white. And I want to make sure that this is really, really sharp. So you can see how much more that bell pepper pops from that background. Take it here too. Just want to make sure everybody knows this is the background, this is the foreground. And we're gonna go from there. Okay, so now we have our blocked in painting. I'm gonna come back to this uh, and paint it later. So I'm gonna actually end up remixing all of these colors. Uh, I will go through how I mix them again. And remember that even though this looks bright red, remember that when I have this, when you compare it to the actual cadmium red, here, uh, there's the cadmium red and there's the cadmium orange. And when you compare it to those two, it is much, much grayer and much more toned down than those two, even though on the, on the canvas it looks so bright. This is another really strong use of grays. You want to make sure that uh, you don't oversaturate your canvas with color. And I'm going to go ahead and wait on the stem because I want that area to be extremely fresh and it's so small that if I block it in now, in order to get fresh, I'm going to have to use a tiny brush. So I'm just going to go ahead and leave it until next time. So let me know if you have any questions or comments. You're welcome to leave a comment or visit our website at losangelesacademyofart.com. Uh, you can email me directly at info at losangelesacademyofart.com. And better yet, please feel free to come by and check out our studio. We have classes on Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday, as well as summer camps for teens. And we are located in Koreatown in Los Angeles. Uh, and I hope to see you soon. Have a good one.